Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me today. We are going to be painting a really lovely uh, landscape today. It's a seascape ir Irish coastline uh, in acrylics. And I'll be showing you step by step all the way through it, how to draw it and paint it and everything. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. And I think this will be a couple hours probably. We're going to do a two-part series. Um, today we'll do the... Um, background and then on Tuesday we'll be adding some sheep and we're going to have more than this uh, picture here shows. That's my reference image for this painting. <clears throat> It'll show up. And I've got my paints here for today. Our colors are of earth tones a little bit of green blues this is uh, we'll start here uh, unbleached titanium yellow oxide cadmium yellow medium cadmium yellow light phthalo green yellow shade sap green phthalo blue <clears throat> sorry ultramarine blue uh, this is light ultramarine blue. It's just it's just ultramarine blue plus white. It's a premixed color, but uh, you can mix it. This is uh, doxazine purple. This is burnt sienna and burnt umber, and then titanium white. I've just got it in a couple places here. So those are our colors, and I'm going to use a blue watercolor pencil to do our sketch on my. 9 by 12 canvas board here. This is actually a masonite uh, gesso board. So I'm doing a smaller size because this is kind of a complicated landscape so I wanted to give myself plenty of time. So first thing I want to do is figure out where my horizon line is and in this one it's quite close up to the top um, about if you were to split this into quarters, so you know, take this as the halfway mark and split it again, um, that's about where our coastline is. Um, so I'm going to just do a light line across to start with for that. I hope you can see that. No, might have to draw a little bit darker. <clears throat> then there's a long mountain range that comes all the way up here. So I'm going to start about, oh, if I split it in half this way and split it in half again, it's going to be just on the this side of the quarter mark here. So I'm going to bring it up. And do it's kind of a sharp peak there, and then it starts to gently taper down and out back here. Then there's another mountain that's right here, and a smaller actually, that one's a little bit lower than that, maybe like that. And then there's another one that's a little higher back here that kind of goes like that. Let me take that little bit out. The lines are very light on the you screen. You can't see it? Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'll darken that up. There. There's a little gently rolling hill there. There's another one up here. Up there. And then it comes back up and down behind that one and then there is if that's our horizon line there right there is another section right here that come just come up a little bit from that and draw a straight line across leave a little bit of gap right here <clears throat> and then this there's another mountain that comes down here and tapers off out, out of the scene and into the ocean there. 
then from right here you're going to come out straight and then angle down a little bit in just a very small little section of rock that's sticking out right there and about where this one comes back up there's a little bump right here I didn't draw um, somewhere in there there's another section of rock right here that kind of sticks out straight the thing that you need to make sure you're doing is do your um, coastline uh, rocks in this horizontal motion mostly the tops can be um, uneven and there can be a little bit of an un unevenness on the bottom but mainly um, you're gonna see this kind of horizontal line and when we do our water it's going to be the same thing there'll be these horizontal lines because as you get farther away the the um there's a sh your lane line of view is shallower i guess i don't know how to explain it but <clears throat> things look like they're straight across even when they're sloping <clears throat> okay so then right about where we're at here these these two sections are about the same size there and then there's a little section that comes down right here and sort of wiggles in there's some rocks that jut out into the water right here this set of coastline meets up this one and then this cliff kind of has a little section right there and there I drew in that section. This one kind of has like that. So the top part of this is all going to be green and these parts are going to be the cliff. Um, I will have a traceable for this so if you don't want to have to draw this yourself or you're not comfortable with drawing um, it, that'll be available on my Patreon page. So the link to my Patreon is in the description and it's just patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art and they're a dollar a month so you get all the traceables that I do in the month for a dollar so, and that includes all the ones that I did last month too so it's a pretty good deal all right so I need to make that a little bit higher because this one actually kind of comes up and gets close to the horizon line right here it kind of angles up this way And then right about the halfway mark is where the coastline ends. So if you find the split in your um, canvas, that's where your coastline is going to end. That's the, the last little bit of water that you're going to see inland. And then you're going to angle back down. And right about where this one was, you're going to have another cliff right here that comes down and it's going to angle out into the water and this time we're looking more down at it not from straight across so it's it can be it doesn't have to be straight and flat like the other ones were okay so there then there's like this curving line here and this Curves up, back, this line angles up this way, this coastline angles right there and kind of meets up with that. So that's our, yeah, I think that's looking pretty right. <clears throat> then right about where this uh, comes down this is actually going to kind of angle down now our our horizon line is going to angle down just slightly right here it's going to dip down there's some trees here there's a little house right here uh, we're probably not going to worry about these drawing all of that in right yet because we're going to put our mountains in first so it'll cover all of that we'll worry about it later but um, about that this line is going to come in and kind of angle up towards the house uh, 
this one too, okay. Actually, this one comes down in front right here. Okay. Just trying to make sure I'm getting all of these little sections in. Okay, we'll work on the placement of all that later, but then this is going to angle up. It's going to kind of mimic these lines. These lines are going to angle up this way, so this greenery is on these sloping uh, hills. So there's lines that kind of come across like this. And then there's some divisions in the fields that come down. Actually, it's a little bit closer to back here. They kind of come down at an angle, and then this one kind of comes back around and angles off this way. And there's some angled here. This one kind of connects up with that. And then it sort of shifts a little bit and angles this way. So it's not like completely straight across. This one's split one more time. Sorry, I'm just trying to make sure that I get my drawing correct because if I can get all of this in correctly at first, then I can, my, the rest of it will be easier to control. Okay, so this is my coastline back here. There's a section that comes in front right here that is about equal with that. Tapers down right here, low, and then comes back up. And angles all the way up parallel to this line and meets up with that. So that's the cliff there. This angles down here meets up with that. Then there's the, all of this is rock. We're seeing another hillside here that's angling down. And then we're going to cut off this whole bottom section with an, a diagonal line that starts at the halfway mark. So find that halfway mark and it's going to kind of come out straight a little bit and then angle down and cut off just at the bottom. You're going to leave about an inch or so right here. So this whole section is going to be green, greenery. This is where we're going to put our sheep later in Tuesday's video. Then there's a section that comes up here that angles up. There's some, some random hills and things right here that are kind of un, undefined a little bit. Then this rounds off right here for this hillside. And then the only thing we have left is to just put the rest of this cliff in here. So there's, this is the cliff there. The rocks come down. It leaves a little bit of a gap right here. So this one ended right here. There's a little bit of gap of water right here where it drops down and then it comes back up and does this rocky uh, little section that goes out into the water right here. And this is pretty much flat and goes back into this cliff. Okay, so that's our drawing. Hope you can see that okay. So you want to keep all of these smaller cliffs that are up here um, really up in the upper quarter. That'll keep them looking far away. So these ones here, uh, the middle one is right about at the halfway part of your picture is going to be the bottom of this one that comes down. Mm. Okay, let's get painting. <clears throat> I'm going to start up with this guy and we'll just work our way down the canvas. I'm going to do the blue 
of the sky. It's going to be kind of a cloudy, overcast sort of sky. So I'm going to use a lot of white and some of the phthalo blue and just a touch of this uh, light blue, light ultramarine blue. That'll kind of gray it out a little bit. It's actually um, the ultramarine blue plus white. So just put a little bit of that up here. And I'm using a half inch uh, bright. Sorry, we took 15 minutes just to draw it. <laughs> How you doing, hun? You've been quiet today. Oh, I was not interrupting you while you were okay, doing a you. fine drawing yes. tutorial there. <laughs> Just monitoring chat. How's it going? We got our normal chat folks. Oh, well, yeah. So that's like calm. The usual suspects are there. Nice. Hi, guys. Thanks for stopping by today. I'm going to clean that out. <clears throat> I'm going to do some yellow. And up from the bottom, so I'm going to grab some white and add just a t the teeniest bit of light, chamomile light. And you don't want it to turn green, so I wanted to get all that blue out of my brush first. And I want the coast, the horizon line to be kind of yellow, yellowish. So I'm going to brush that on right there. It's going to mix a little bit with the blue and make it a little bit green. That's okay. We can come back in and add a second coat to it. But I just want my horizon to have a little, or the behind the mountains here, to have a little bit of a yellowish tint. It'll look really pretty against that purple once we do the mountains in purple. If you get too much paint on like I did there, just keep on painting and don't wait too long, but I'm just trying to get most of the paint off my brush here and I'm going to wipe it clean. I'm just going to come back in and lightly pick it up and it'll just lift it just like a sponge. And I'll just keep wiping it off until I get most of it picked up and blend it out. So you're the boss of the paint. Don't let it intimidate you. <laughs> Sometimes it tries to misbehave. You can make it do what you want it to do. Um, just don't fuss with this too much because you don't want the um, sky color to lift. If it starts to dry, it will lift on you. So just kind of do it as quick, do it quickly and we'll come back to it and add more layers later if we need to. So this is just our first coat. So none of these are gonna be exactly what it's gonna look like when we're finished. <clears throat> so now I'm gonna grab the light ultramarine blue and this will be our main color for these back mountains. I'm gonna add a little bit of white to it. So these back ones are gonna be the softest, most muted mountains. I really like this color. I use it quite a bit for mountains. It's very, soft purple, you know, purpley blue. It's a really, really good color for mountains. Just add that in. I'm going to do all of these back mountains with this color. Just go right over the top of your, any lines that you made with your pencil. You don't want those to show, so sure those are covered. And just pulling down so that if they have any streaks it'll kind of make it look like it's part of that mountain. I'll kind of angle it a little bit when I'm pulling down. <clears throat> okay and then this mountain is going to have this color too but it's going to have a little bit more detail so I'm going to grab a little bit of the darker purple and use without the white mixed in and use that here. Mm -hmm. 
and just remember to keep that horizon line flat in these back ones here, these faraway mountains. Okay. Then these ones we're going to add a little bit of purple. So it'll darken up this color. We don't need a lot. Just give it a little bit different hue, a little bit brighter. Colors will get more saturated and brighter, darker when you get closer to you. So these ones that are farther away will kind of dull them a little bit and we mute them. The white will help do that. And then as we get to the bottom here, our, our greens are going to be at the brightest right here up close to where we're at. So um, let's add a little bit darker purple. Maybe a teeny tiny bit of burnt sienna, and the burnt sienna will kind of make it a little bit more oranged, orangey purple, or brownish purple, I guess. We're going to do that for this one. And this whole section here is going to have this yeah. now this is our background color really most of this is going to be covered up by other colors but we're going to put this in first and we'll add other colors to it this painting has lots of layers so you just have to kind of be patient and do the layers it really makes a big difference to the finished product if you'll take the time to do all these different layers gives it much more, I think, more professional kind of look. out. Let's put in our water. So we're going to use the phthalo blue color that we used in our sky. Phthalo blue and white. And we might add just a little bit of yellow for to give it a little bit of a yellowish tinge too in some places. But I'm going to start up here and I'm just going to start filling in this water and I'm going to put it in in this horizontal motion so that I get streaks that are horizontal. In the water, I'm going to grab a little bit of white, put a little extra white in the areas by the coastline. Keep my brush, I'm just sliding my brush side to side kind of holding it flat and just sliding it side to side to get some faint lines in the water here. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see it better. Grab a little bit more of the, oops, wrong blue. more of the darker thalo blue, just streak it in. Now I, I bumped up the colors from the photograph, obviously, because the colors in there are a little bit more grayed. It's like an overcast day, so the colors aren't as bright as what, but I made them a little bit brighter. So, some You 
been doing, hun? I'm staying awake. Yeah, and you're mm-hmm. being really quiet. <laughs> no questions? That's kind of weird. No questions. Everybody's just talking to each other. Okay. Talking about some people have changed for daylight savings already and others haven't. Oh, their clocks? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you know, U.S. and I think Canada maybe have already changed, and but parts, Other of, parts of the world haven't? haven't yet. Mm. They'll do it next weekend, I think. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I got to go hang out with some of my girlfriends this weekend, and or last night, and today's the weekend, I guess. So that was Friday night. Uh, not quite the weekend yet. I'm adding just a little bit of cadmium yellow. Um, I don't think you can see that. Sorry, let me zoom. Push this out this way. Cadmium yellow medium to my blue to make it kind of a little bit green. Just slightly green tint to my water because sometimes the water will get that color. Um, yeah, the <laughs> my girlfriends took me out to to celebrate my birthday because my birthday's next week but we couldn't all agree on a date we're all going on going different places <clears throat> so anyhow we we went out last night and well you know this story i'm telling everybody else i'm like acting like you didn't hear this already sorry <laughs> but we went to oh, one of those puzzle rooms you weren't home last night i wasn't home last night no wow i missed that <laughs> yeah and we we really suck at math. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Didn't know there was going to be math on this test. <laughs> we went to the puzzle escape room and down. And uh, if for those in other parts of the world, I don't know if they do them, but they're kind of a new thing uh, in the U.S. here, where you go into this room and they've got clues, and you have to find your way out of the room by answering, f- solving the you know clues and riddles and oh my gosh one of them was to answer <laughs> to <laughs> decipher roman numerals into math into uh and they even had the char- chart that's the sad thing about it the c equaled you know five and v equaled four or whatever you know so it wasn't like it was that hard and we still we still did not <laughs> we probably spent 15 minutes trying to answer you know the simplest math equation ever. <laughs> it just cracked me up. We're so bad. I did it first, and then somebody else did it, and then because I got one of the numbers wrong, wrong the first time. Somehow I, I don't know. Anyhow, it just it was like a comedy of errors. I swear. We only got halfway through. We definitely did not break out of prison. <laughs> We were in handcuffs half the time, too, which made it even harder. So, I don't know. I, we're just lucky we got out of the handcuffs. That was... Somehow, when I <laughs> when I put my hands through the bar of the prison to try to get the key off the hook, I think I pushed my handcuffs tighter. So, I had, like, w- like welts on my wrist the whole rest of the night from where the handcuffs had tightened up on my... Yeah, I... I'm not going to go into a life of crime. I, I would not so that's survive. So that's the story she's giving everybody. <laughs> really, they were partying, partying and, and party. they got arrested. <coughs> no. They got locked up. And we tried to break out, but it didn't yeah. work out. Yeah, that's what really happened. Oh. So. I think our, our uh, waiter story. was very disappointed that we weren't ordering shots and stuff. He <laughs> <laughs> was like, what can I get you, ladies? And we were like... Water, iced tea, <laughs> Dr. Pepper. <laughs> it's like, really? <laughs> we are so crazy. <laughs> it was funny. He said we missed the Magic Mike show, though. He said it was at 9, so we were eating early. We missed <laughs> he, was, he was joking. <laughs> it's pretty funny. He's a big dude, too. <laughs> he was really big. He was like, oh, sorry, ladies. I miss out on it. It was fun. We had a good time. Got to get out and get out and do that as much as I need did used to get to. <clears throat> oh, 
All right, so just adding a little bit of water in here, or a little bit of white in here. I kind of lost this drawing part there, but that's okay. I'll add it back in. There were some rocks that came out right there. So just keeping my lines horizontal here. Actually, this part's pretty light. Through here. <clears throat> yeah, so we're going back. We're definitely going back for the next birthday, Dave's birthday, and we're going to beat it. We're determined to beat that room. So we'll we'll be able to get halfway through if we can remember. I still don't remember how I answered the math equation finally because they had kind of given up and moved on, and I kept trying finally. Finally got the right combination of answered the math question. It was the simplest. I mean, it was like a thousand plus a hundred plus six plus four plus you know it was plus fifty. It wasn't that hard. We were I don't know what we were doing, but we were making it way harder than it needed to be. So crazy. Okay, adding a little bit more green now down here. Just a little bit of green in the water. Yeah, we're just. So, note to self, don't try to not, I, I don't know, it wasn't like it was algebra. Okay, so that's good, I think. Oops, I'm off camera there. I think you should have to tell me no. I'll go off camera. You would think I'd be better at that by now. Yeah, no. But you'd be wrong. Well, okay, you got a little bit more dark down there. Okay. So there's our water line. Let me zoom out. You can see. So we've got our basics going here. Really what we're doing is just trying to get our all of our main sections filled in and then we'll <clears throat> fill in the details later so let's work on the cliffs I'm going to switch to a smaller brush for that I'm going to grab my half inch bright this is my titanium so it's kind of a stiff bristled brush and we're going to put in the cliffs I'm going to grab the purple first Add a little bit of this burnt sienna to it to dull it out just a little bit and put in. I'm just going to use the edge of the brush and pull down the flat brush, flat side, I guess, pull down almost straight down into the water and then make sure that I get a kind of a uneven line at the bottom there of the water. You don't want it to be completely perfectly flat. That'll make it look like there's rocks. So I just kind of tapped along that bottom edge keeping it keeping it in that horizontal line though. Okay, that. Grab a little bit more. I'm going to spray my canvas. Okay. Mark's got me taped to my chair so I can't move. <laughs> Help, at, I'm being repressed. <laughs> at least you're not handcuffed to your chair. True, true. It could be worse. Boy, I try to paint with handcuffs. <laughs> it, was, it was not easy to, to write with handcuffs, that, that's for sure. <clears throat> okay, burnt sienna and purple, doxazine purple here. I'm going to do a little bit more on this one. These are going to look really dark at first, so we're going to tone them down, but for now they're going to be really dark. We'll add lighter colors over the top. Okay. Looks pretty 
started. We're just basically wanting to fill in all of these areas and make sure there's no white of the canvas showing after we're done with all these layers. This one had that rocky section that came out into the water here. I'm just going to use the corner of my brush to kind of tap in some random rock shapes. Just tap a small tapping motion there. Actually, that probably needs to come up a little higher. And this needs to be brought up. <clears throat> I came down too far on that. Let me grab some of my blue there, cover this part up. This part is needs to be even with this, so it needs to grab some white. There we go. Wipe my brush off and then blend it out a little bit just to make sure that it's wipe my brush off, keep wiping it. Pick up some blue. There we go. Just need to bring that up a little bit. It was too far down. Turn that down. Okay. <clears throat> Let me make sure my hand's not in the way there, sorry. This upper part is comes up pretty high up here. We've had some red-headed lady join us in chat. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm giving you clues. That's like the escape room. Red-headed lady? Mm-hmm. She paints. Oh, cinnamon. <laughs> she's not red-headed. She's got her well, pink hair. She's well, pink. Well, I'm sorry, but her <laughs> the picture in chat is red. Okay. Hi, cinnamon. <laughs> Cinnamon and I have a really cool collaboration coming up with Lindsay. Um, Cinnamon is the art Sherpa. If you haven't seen her channel already, you need to check it out. She's got amazing stuff. And um, she and I have a group called Angeluni on Facebook. We do collaborations here on YouTube every about once a month now. And um, we have joined forces with Lindsay, the frugal crafter, Lindsay Wyrick, and we are going to be doing castles on Friday. So we'll be doing a live stream a day early next week. So next Saturday we won't have a show, so we're going to be out of town, and we are going to have the live show on Friday instead, and it'll be a collaboration with Cinnamon and... Lindsay, so I think I'm going to go first, and I think mine's going to be um, probably 10. I'll make sure that I have the information up on my in my Facebook groups, and on once I schedule it, I'll put it up on my channel page, so you can just go to my channel on Friday or a couple days early, check it out, and see what time we're going to be doing it, but should be really fun. So Lindsay's going to go on live after me and then Cinnamon's going to go on in the afternoon. So it should be fun. It'll be a full day of painting. <laughs> Castles. <clears throat> and I haven't decided exactly which castle I'm going to do yet. There's so many good ones out there. I've got great pictures people have sent me and I've got some references from online. So 
You got to do the one from my hometown or else I'll never forgive you. I know. Mark wants me to do one from his hometown, so I don't know. I might have to do that. Mm -hmm. No pressure. <laughs> I don't have any royalty for pictures of that, though. I can't use the, just use pictures off online. I got to have permission to use them, and I don't have any photos. You have to go visit them and take some pictures so I can use them. Maybe I can make a, f a few phone calls and see what we can do. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure you got some connections still in that area. Yes, that is where I played Santa Claus in the first grade Christmas play. Really? At that there. castle? Yes. Oh. So it's very famous. They give tours. To talk about how Mark used to play. Yeah, they probably had that section roped off <laughs> where I performed. <laughs> nice. I think Madame Trudeau did a wax sculpture of me. Trousseau. Trousseau. Yeah, that's what I meant. I'm going to grab some burnt umber now and use that for some of these ones closer to us. Mix that with the purple. <clears throat> no, you can keep going. Keep going. I want to hear about it. Oh, yeah. no, 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 no. That's okay. You wanted to talk about art stuff. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, so, yeah. We'll we got some folks that want us to do an Outlander type castle from Scotland. So, I don't know. There's a lot of opinions. Oh, my about gosh, it. really? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? <sighs> Jamie's my secret book, book character crush. <laughs> Mark's is not so secret. <laughs> you may be getting a kilt at some point <laughs> just saying <clears throat> what was that I can't believe you were like whoa no <laughs> what <laughs> And be careful. You don't want to just. <laughs> Jamie, he's, he's got some fans. Yeah, apparently he's pretty popular amongst the ladies here in chat. <laughs> 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 yep. photo not just my painting yeah, this one comes quite a bit out from this point here so all the way down to there Up along the bottom. It's a little bit, I told Mark before we started, it's kind of this being like a little dab of this and a little dab of that, and it's not, so it's, it's just kind of have to. And then we digressed into some song. Yeah. <laughs> I had to play the Wizard of Oz song. For the <laughs> You didn't, you Aerial know, Land of Oz. You didn't have to. I did. I did have to. No. Just reminded me of it. <clears throat> it's, if I could sing, I'd sing it, but I, I can't. Oh, darn it. <laughs> Mark's not much for musicals, so... That's an overstatement. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Oops. You made me do that. Look at what you made me do. Uh, I didn't make you do anything. You did. No. I was laughing. I wasn't looking at what I was doing. Mm -hmm. It's your fault. Yeah, you wanted to go see that that new movie musical. La La Land? Yeah. 
which may or may not have won the Academy Award. <laughs> Apparently didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Almost won it <laughs> by mistake. <laughs> with the wet brush there. Yeah. <clears throat> I never could find anybody to go with me to see that, so we'll just have to rent it. Fortunately, it's pretty easy to rent things nowadays. Well, I you don't told even have you, to leave the house. I told you I would go with you. Well, I didn't want to But you didn't make want you me to go with you. No, that's not true. Mm -hmm. It's not true. Mm -hmm. Who, who's the uh, lead actor in that movie? Ryan Gosling. Oh, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. It doesn't have anything to do with him. Ryan Gosling dancing. <sighs> See? Sure, honey. Oh, don't, don't even. Uh, that wasn't <laughs> sure even. You, sure, your dancing is way better than his. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Oops. You're still, I'm still going off camera here. I need to make sure that I'm staying on camera. Okay. So this is like a little hollow right here. A little shadow right there. This comes down. We can adjust these later, so this doesn't have to be perfect right now. But there's like a another hillside that kind of comes all the way up diagonal right here. So, and then this one kind of connects these two there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then there's all these rocks that come out right into the water over here. This one is a little farther out. Okay, I'm just trying to get my shapes incorrectly right now. That's the main objective right now. I'm not worried too much about anything other than just making sure that I have my everything kind of lined up and set so that I can just come back in and put in highlights and be done. Clean that brush out. It's starting to get sticky. I'll grab some brown this time. Burnt umber. Put that down. And just a teeny tiny bit of purple. And we'll do that on this cliff here. This one's more kind of like a hillside almost. It's sort of and down there and there's all these hills and things right here I really needed to bring that water in a little bit, so I'm going to bring, grab some of that blue and bring my water in slightly more over here. Whoop. <clears throat> I'll have you know, Chad has gone downhill. They're all talking about musicals now. Oh, really? <laughs> well, 
I did have a crush on Gene Kelly for a long time when I was growing up until I saw Xanadu, and then I was like, realized how old he was. I think, well, maybe not. <laughs> kind of killed it for me. <laughs> okay, so there we go. This needs to slope just kind of a that, and then we're going to think that that's pretty good as far as our browns and things go. Let me zoom out. I think the rest of it is shades of of uh, greens and things and just highlights. So we'll let's start putting in some of our green and then we'll start highlighting some stuff. So the green I want to do back here, I'm going to use the um, light blue violet, this light ultramarine blue, and a little bit of the sap green. And it'll be, it'll make a gray purpley green color. Paints are starting to get soupy. Okay, I added too much water to them or something. Okay, so I'm going to use that color. It's going to be close in value, maybe a little bit darker than the mountain behind it, but pretty close in value to it. So it's just going to be a little bit of a color dip change right here. We'll use that on top of these cliffs. And you're really not seeing the grass on this part, but you're seeing it on this lower section here a little bit. Here again, I'm just pulling my brush side to side to get that kind of feeling of movement. Grab a little bit darker sap green. Still got the purple in my brush though. I'm going to add a little bit of it right here, maybe a little bit along that back side there. Okay. Let's add a little bit of white to it. Mix some purple with it. So purple, sap green, more sap green than purple. That's going to be kind of our far trees and some of the shadows in our cliff too. And then we'll use some of this white to lighten it up. It's going to make kind of a brownish color. <clears throat> kind of an olive. We'll tap it in along here. Put a little bit of it in the cliff. This cliff is kind of grayed out slightly because it's so far away. It's not this vibrant purple that we've got it right now. It's got a lot of gray green in it. I'm going to put a little bit of it pulling down from the cliff like it's got some of the greenery kind of coming down. Mainly right in here there's kind of a section that looks like there's green on top. Miss Margaret has popped in to say Margaret? hi. Margaret? Doing. Okay. 
You guys are, what, about five weeks from? Yeah, Memphis in May, baby. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Music. Grabbing some phthalo blue, adding it to the green, sap green. We're going to make a kind of a blue-green color. We're going to use that along here. On this back side. Yep, I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, we've got some good bands coming this year. So we see Kings of Leon and all kinds of ex, ex ambassadors and I'm trying to think of who else. Be good. I don't remember who all. <clears throat> my brush out. I'm going to work on this mountain a little bit, I think. I'm going to add some of this light blue violet or the light ultramarine blue to the front mountain. Grab a little bit of the darker ultramarine. And we're just going to use that to kind of create some hills here. There's like some valleys and things that you're seeing in this mountain. So I'm just going to do these diagonal kind of lines to create some slopes. Maybe not that dark. This one is wanting to lift the color off of the canvas. I'm not really happy with this panel today. I should have used a canvas, I think. The panel's wanting to lift. All right, so I'm mixing the watercolor with a little bit of the blue, uh, light ultramarine blue. We'll use that over here. Kind of pull some of that color from the mountain or from the sky down onto our mountains. Just create some shapes there. Grab a little bit more of that purple from the mountain and pull down, mix them together a little bit. This is a good highlight color. We'll just use that kind of to highlight some of these mountains. Here. Leave some of the darker areas so that it looks like there's some cliffs or something happening or some little indentations in the rock mountain. All right, I think that looks pretty good. So you can kind of see what we're doing there. We're just adding some more detail to that. And then we'll add a little bit of this blue, ultramarine blue to this mountain here too, just slightly right down here to kind of define that shoreline a little bit. And pull. shadows in it. I'm going to use a little bit of that <coughs> blue with the green here. Let's go over this area here to soften it up. Some of that color 
right here. I'm going to grab some yellow oxide and use a bit, little bit of that mixed with this purple and sap green color and we'll use that up along our horizon line where the house is going to sit add a little bit of that color I'm just putting it in, if you notice, I'm doing lots of little just dabbing brush strokes and keeping my brush kind of going in this horizontal motion. And that'll kind of create these layers upon layers of depth. And just changing the colors just a little bit will kind of make it look like there's something happening back there. Grab a little bit more of that yellow oxide color. And add a little bit of that to this cliff side right here. Just kind of pop that out a little bit with some yellow. Take a little bit of it off. Grab some of that green and just blend that out. <clears throat> okay. Now these cliffs here are going to get some of this um, color that was our mountain color. So I'm going to grab some of that purple. I still have a little bit of green in my brush. So I'm going to add that purple and burnt sienna mixture that we made that had a little bit of this. Uh, it had all three of these colors in it. It was the color of this mountain here. I'm going to use that in my cliffs right here. I'm just going to tap in some little highlights along that cliff there. Very lightly, just pull down a little bit of highlights here and there. You can look at your reference photo to see where the light's hitting. This one's got kind of a light section right here. There's some highlights on these rocks. Just using the corner of my brush for that. Make sure you're leaving lots of dark in there. This is just going to give the illusion of some depth by having some light and dark areas here. I'm going to grab some more of that purple and burnt sienna darker mixture and tap back in some of that top to kind of set that back. Okay. So we're already getting kind of a cliffside feeling there. And we don't have to go too light on our, or too dark on our um, values. We need, we need some really dark areas, but we, we're not getting super light on these back, back cliffs because there's you're not seeing a lot of the really bright highlights back there. They're so far away. They're muted. So we can kind of use these softer colors and as we get closer to the front here we'll use brighter highlight colors. So that looks pretty good I think. I'm happy with that. I'm going to use a little bit of this purple this darker purple color and just sort of run it along the bottom of this mountain here and define that horizon line just a little bit. Oh. Pull a little bit of the purple in there and there. Okay. These hills kind of come pretty far up, so I'm going to pull those up a little bit higher with the purple. <clears throat> All right, I'm happy with that. Let's move down over here. I 
I'm gonna add a second coat of color to these hairs that that was the light blue violet or the light ultramarine blue and just a little bit of white. Let's grab a little bit of our water color to mix that together. We'll use that to highlight these mountains. Start over here. Wipe off most of that. It's just weird you're being so quiet today, Annie. Well, I've been sitting here eyeing this chocolate, and I'm just going to make some noise and open it up because <laughs> I just can't stand it anymore. <laughs> so You're going for it. I don't think you're being very sneaky. Okay, that's better. You're not being very stealthy over there. <laughs> that's my Valentine's Day candy, right? What? From February that I haven't eaten yet. No comprendo. <laughs> no habla inglés. No parlez-vous anglais. <laughs> Wrong languages there. It's all right. One of my girlfriends sent me some gourmet chocolates this week. Chris Howe for my birthday. They're so pretty. I took one little bite of them, but I couldn't, I couldn't look at, aren't they pretty? <laughs> <laughs> they look like little jewels. So I'll be enjoying those. I can't talk. I got food in my mouth. Can't talk. You got food in your mouth. Okay. I don't know if I'll share those with you. I might. I might share them with you a little bit. We can like each take a bite. Decide which one we like the best. They're probably a little bit better than the chair dolly. Maybe. <laughs> Okay, so Mona gave me, but I can't pronounce anything that <laughs> she wrote. Uh-oh. Yeah, how to say. I don't speak English. but <laughs> <laughs> Oh, how to say I don't speak English? <laughs> yeah, but I'm not going to awesome. give that a shot. <laughs> In Swedish? Yeah. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Chicken? Oh, I can try to destroy the Swedish language. <laughs> it's all right. We're probably all glad you. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Let's see. All right, we're already an hour into it. We haven't even gotten our green. But we've got most of this upper part done, so I think we're doing good. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see where we're at. Uh, there's actually a little bit of green in these hills. I'm going to grab some of that green that I used there that was the sap green and blue, light blue, violet, and use that a little bit of it in this mountain here, just slightly. Pull that greenery up into the mountains a little bit. Yeah, it's pulling the color off. Do you see that, what it just did there? It's like when I go to layer something on top of it, it's pulling the color off. Does it need to be blow dried? Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, it might be taking a little bit longer to, it may be taking a little bit longer to it's dry the under layers because it's, it's on a hard board. I'm blowing from over here, but it's just Sorry. not working. Well, that's okay. Uh, I think I can manage. Okay. I'm, I'm good. Sorry everybody had to hear me blowing there. All right, grabbing some wee purple and burnt sienna and a little bit of the light blue violet. I'm gonna put in this little section here. Just there's like a dark outline right there along the outside edge of that cliff. It kind of comes up this way. There we go. 
Okay, let's go ahead and put in our little sections here of the, with this color. Now that I've got it, I'm pushing my brush flat and I'm going to use it to tap in sort of some shadows along this back line. Our house is going to go right in here. So I'm just going to tap in a few shadows where that tree line is going to be in this with this purple. And then I'm going to start putting in our sections for this. The fields are sectioned off into these little quadrants. So there's like these lines that kind of come through and I'm going to, I'll put them in and then we can define them better when we put our green fields in. We can do our green fields in kind of different colors, each section a different color almost. This one kind of comes down at an angle right here. And I'm just using these lines to kind of define where these goes. It kind of, I think they use the, the natural rocky out points here to kind of decide where to put some of these lines. So they're not straight, so I'm just tapping. I think they're rock, probably. So, just tap. A few kind of jagged lines. And these ones start to angle this way. Down to there. And there's sections here. And this one connects up there. So there's a big one right here and this has actually got a split right down the middle. Okay, so those are kind of, it honestly doesn't matter too much. You just kind of want a meandering line here and then some lines going this way and lines going this way to connect up to the thing. They'll, they'll get a little bit closer together as you get up towards here, so I actually probably want to put in another one that's really close to that, and I think there's another one that kind of comes off this way. And then these ones farther down here, a little bit farther apart, you get bigger sections here and here. So, and I'm just going to use what's left on my brush here to kind of draw in some dark areas along this cliff here. There's these dark shadows in the grassy area. Let's use up what's left on my brush. <clears throat> okay, put some green cliffs. We'll put the house in first, I think. Let me grab my smaller brush here. I'm going to zoom right in for you. So you can get to, ooh, that's really bright. Really zoomed. Okay, so right there, we're going to put in our little house in trees. I'm going to grab the sap green with a little bit of the purple mixed in. Make a really, really dark purpley green color. And I'm just going to start tapping in it's right about here to here. So uh, yeah, I think that's right about where it starts right there. So I'm going to Oh, my stomach's growling. Did you hear that? I didn't have any breakfast. Probably should have eaten something. That's what I get for staying up late and waking up. For getting arrested. <laughs> yeah. Having to get bailed out. 
Right, in 2 a.m. or something, mm -hmm. whatever it was. Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay, so little dabs there just to make some trees, making sure that I kind of get them uneven. And I left a little space right here for my little house to go. I'm going to grab the unbleached titanium and this brush, and I'm just going to make a little square right here, and then a little pointy front roof line like that. Grab some of that phthalo blue, and we'll do the roof of the house with the blue there and there's like a door right there okay then I'm going to grab some of that green that I used for my bushes and I'm going to tap over the front of that just a little bit to sort of blend it in a little bit then I'm going to grab some of the yellow oxide and maybe a little bit of the unbleached titanium mix that with the sap green We'll tap in some highlights on our tree, maybe a little bit brighter than that. I'm not going to see a lot of detail on these, so don't worry too much, but I want a little bit of variation in the color. And then there's a couple of spots. I'm going to grab a little bit more of the unbleached titanium. There's a couple of spots where there's some bright little something that I don't know if there are more houses or there's just something going on back there. So. I think that's good. Grab a little bit of the blue that we use for the water, the thala blue and white. And there's a little section of, I don't know if it's water or something that's right in there. So I'm just going to put a little line of that right there. And then there's a little bit more showing right there too. There. I think that the, I think that this water comes all the way inland there, but you, but this is cutting it off, so you're not seeing all of it. Right, let me grab some more white, some brighter white. And I'm just going to use a little bit of it along my coastline here and put in a little trailing edge of white where the rocks are getting hit by the surf. Just a little bit. It'll kind of help sell the fact that that's a coastline there. Just some little dabs of white and I want to pull them side to side so that they're not circles. I want the bottom edges of them to blend out. So if I push my brush kind of flat, I can use it to pull lines. Actually, I'm going to get up in here to round that. Put some of this white around these rocks here.
very light touch. I'm just kind of tapping with my brush and pulling these little horizontal lines in the water to define that coastline a little bit. So did you see that cool uh, painting of the coffee mug? I did. I did. What was her name? Eden. Eden. Yes. Little Eden. She drew me stick lady too. She mm -hmm. drew my portrait in stick lady form. That was awesome. How old is she? Uh, let me see oh, here. Oh, what did I do there? Look what I did. Uh, yeah, I was wondering what you were doing well, there. Really? Did you notice that? Uh, yeah, I did. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know. You're uh, putting black stuff all over the bottom corner of your painting there. I, yeah, I did. Okay, well, let me zoom out so you can see what I did. Yes, eight years old. Eight years old. So cute. Oh, my gosh, that was adorable. And I like the winking. <laughs> yeah. Then, yeah. That was great. <laughs> She drew, she painted the coffee cup tutorial and then, yeah, sent it, sent me a picture with, with she and I yep. holding our coffee mugs in stick form. That was yep. awesome. That was great. So cute. Thank you, Eden. She did a great job. Okay. Sorry. I have no idea what I did down here. This is a disaster area, so I guess I'm getting some blue. She is human, people. She's I must a, have stuck my hand in that she's corner not a or something. Robot painter. No. Oh well, no. I'm definitely the Julia Childs of of painting. If I can make a mess of it, I will for sure. So if somehow I found my way into the into the paint. My stomach is continuing to growl here. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> So this is a two-parter, right? Yep, two-part. We'll do the sheep next week um, on Tuesday night. Um, I just figured the sheep would be... I want to take my time with them, you know, give them some good detail. So mm -hmm. um, it'll be easier that way. Let me use this bigger brush and I'll put my green hills in. So I'm going to use the phthalo green in this area and add a little bit of cadmium yellow medium. That'll just make it a little bit brighter. And I'm going to really mix a bunch of different colors. So first I'm just going to kind of lay on some of this color. This is a kind of a medium green. Grab some sap green and add a little bit of that in as I'm putting it in. I'm going to cover up my mess there. So no idea how I don't even feel it. That's the sad thing. It's like I must not have any feeling in this part of my, my hand. <laughs> I did not even notice that I had touched the paint. I get so into what I'm doing. It's, it's absorbed. Okay, I'm just adding a little sap green here and there. So, what we're going to do is come back in with the fan brush and add some texture. So, we're just kind of not worried too much right now. We're just kind of trying to get a background color in there. And sort of laid in with brush, choppy brush strokes so that it's got kind of uh, the movement. Oh, honey, I'm way off. You didn't let me know. Hey, you're, you're uh, way off camera there, <sighs> and you had made a mess down there in that bottom corner. I just painted that whole thing with being off camera. Well, well, Sorry, I mean, you, guys. you're just putting your brush in green paint and slapping it on there. I mean, w what are they missing exactly? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Take some green, put it on your brush. Slap it on. Slap it on, back and forth, back and forth. Get some more green paint. Check. Get a little bit more of that color there and slap it on. Thanks. See, I I'm an expert. I painted that one. Uh, what flower was that again that I painted? Poppy. Poppy, yes. So, 
Okay. You're just lucky I'm not, you know, launching my own YouTube art channel and competing well, with you. There's a lot of people that are, so I wouldn't yeah. be surprised. <laughs> to be like one video. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, so in this area, I'm going to use some of this burnt umber and purple mixture. Add some of the like. Um, unbleached titanium to it and we're going to put some of that in here just as a shadow color along this edge this is also going to be some of our color that we'll use in to highlight the cliffs so actually comes down to here <clears throat> now if you look at this now right if you are if you're painting this and you get to this point you're going to start normally it's normal to kind of freak out and to start thinking that it doesn't look good and it really, you know, it doesn't, it's not finished at this point. So um, paintings kind of progress in a... Um, oh, we got a super chat. It's sort of like, ooh. From the Art Sherpa. Did she? She did. Thank you, Cinnamon. That was so sweet. <laughs> um, paintings progress. I kind of think of it like, like um, childhood to adulthood, you know. You go through the teen stage, it's kind of awkward. You're a little bit fugly for a little while. You know, your your feet are too big for your body and a little uncoordinated. So that's what's going on here. This is the teen sort of awkward stage <laughs> of our painting. <laughs> we're we're going to get to the adult stage eventually. We'll try to get it, you know, to the finished results. But don't freak out when you get into this middle part because it is going to look really weird and, you know, this kind of you will you'll grow out of it <laughs> just keep on <laughs> the acne will clear up that's right the acne will clear up eventually your, your hopefully vo your voice will level out yep yep <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's what we're going for so i grab this color here that we mixed this was unbleached titanium, burnt sienna, and purple. Kind of a light, mix kind of a mauve almost. It's a really pretty color. And we're gonna use this to highlight these rocks a little bit. So I'm just gonna tap. I've got my angle, quarter inch brush again. And I'm just gonna pull down some light sort of streaks on this. I want it to be broken up though, so I'm just barely gonna tap, touch it. I don't want it to be like solid color happening. And I'm going to use a little bit of it on, tap it along this front side. Okay, lose a little bit of it over here. So there's some. <coughs> it's happening some areas where there's kind of like uh, toward the bottom here you're going to kind of have some sort of horizontal lines some of these are going to come vertical but as you get to the bottom here when it starts to flatten out you're going to do a little bit of diagonal more more horizontal type lines and grab a little bit of purple with this unbleached titanium make a A little bit brighter color and we'll add a little bit of that just adding a little very very light brush strokes here just and kind of just go with it don't worry too much if you get too much of the color you can just always go back in and add some more of that darker color to tone it down so don't be scared to get in there and really put in some of these highlights 
we can always adjust it later if we get too happy with it and get too much on there. So tap in. Down here there's kind of like little rocks so I'm just going to tap to maybe indicate that those are sort of rocks. I'm going to grab the this color. This is my violet color that was in the mountains back there. I'm going to pull some of that in to this area. This is a really good shadow color. It's a light shadow color, so it's like our rocks are not in full sun. They've got a little bit of this blue tint to it, but they still are getting some indirect light. We'll put a little bit of it at the top here. So we're adding three different highlight colors. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see these a little bit better. Just don't let me go off camera. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> Not off camera. <laughs> don't, I don't need to play by play. It's okay. Just, Still on camera. <laughs> don't, don't make me laugh. Uh, I can't. Oh, oh. I'm still. This allergies are. Yeah, still you still kicking my butt. Yeah, you gave me your allergies. I know. I. I didn't know I, allergies were contagious. Well, maybe it was a cold. I don't know. <laughs> I thought it was allergies, but maybe it wasn't. <laughs> Obviously, if you got them, then they're not. Uh, well, there have been a lot of people sick at work. All of, yeah. It's okay. kind of making a resurgence here in mm -hmm. 2017. Add a little bit to this mountainside here, too. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of this color up here. Whoop, that's too bright. Grab that light blue violet. There we go. Okay, looking pretty good. Let me add a little bit of the watercolor. I'm gonna grab a little bit of that phthalo blue. Maybe add just a tiny bit of burnt sienna to it to green it out and dull it slightly. And a tiny bit of burnt. Mm, oh. They can't see that if you're trying to show oh, that on sorry. screen. Thank you. Phthalo blue, burnt sienna, a little bit of light blue, uh, light unbleached titanium. I can't say that color. I'm putting a little bit of that in on my rocks too, just slightly. Just maybe there's moss or something, I don't know. But it's just going to give them a little bit of that watercolor up in the rocks. And then I'm going to put some of this color up in my field over here. This field's going to get a little bit of this teal color. All right, let's grab my bigger brush and we will keep on going with these fields. Add some more green. So we've got phthalo green and cadmium yellow medium. <clears throat> Let's add a little bit of this yellow oxide. I think, sorry. Okay. So we're making kind of an olive color, olive green. And I'm going to use that here. And fill in this section with this kind of more olive. I'm way off camera, yeah. Okay. I mean, 
I was watching the whole time. And as soon as I looked down at chat to make sure I didn't miss any questions, <laughs> you go off camera. Sorry. <laughs> I don't trust you anymore. I'm just not going to ask you to do it. Sorry. You lost it. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, you, you're, you're really sad. I'm going to grab some phthalo green here. Out of my green. The phthalo green is going to be your, like, a ginger cook, cinnamon's mom calls it circus color so it's a it's a green that you're not going to use straight out of the tube almost ever because it's too vibrant it's it's a mixing green you know you're going to be mixing it with other colors to get uh, different shades this is very 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 vibrant so it's got a lot of tinting strength and it's a little bit goes a long way with the mixing so mixed it with grab my yellow oxide mixture here we'll keep on pushing this down this little section of mountain that sort of comes curved down here and I'm gonna go some burnt umber a little bit of purple and there's a dark area right in here that I kind of lost so there's a really dark shadows right along the bottom of this cliff that I want to tap in there and make sure I have some of these dark areas the top creating kind of a shadowed area right in here okay I'm gonna grab some of my lighter green color there's a little bit of this green on top of this it's peeking out right here thank you now you're now you're helping <laughs> it's too late <laughs> oh that's it I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna turn one of these dials over <laughs> here real quick <laughs> and yeah <laughs> okay I'm gonna grab some burnt sienna and add that to my green over here it'll kind of brown it out I'm gonna use it right here along this cliff edge just kind of blend between these colors you just want to soften up the purple to green sections here because they're pretty obvious right now so I'm just kind of trying to soften that up a little bit and round out that cliff a little bit and grab some of my purple mix that with what's on my brush and we're gonna tap along that edge good grab some of my really dark purple and put in a nice dark shadow right here there's some really dark grab that burnt umber too really dark right in here <laughs> grab some of my green and pull some of my green down into my rock here like this that. mixing board has a lot of cool sound effects on it that's all <laughs> I'm going to say <laughs> okay <laughs> so I better be nice to you is what you're saying I wonder what phaser sounds like <laughs> 
should try. We should try that one, huh? <sighs> I'm sighing at you now. Grab me this blue. Adding that to my green. I think I want a little bit of teal right on that little spot right there. Yeah, just not even. Maybe we'll try it on my voice first. Okay. Make sure it sounds okay. Thanks. I have no idea what it Some sounds like. Green. Ooh, that sounds weird. Did you just do your voice in phaser? I did. It's not that exciting, actually. No. no. Okay. As I get farther away, I'm going to get a little bit more dull with my colors, so I'm going to grab more of the sap greens and work those in um, to my colors. So, um, this is pretty dark right now, but I'll probably add some highlights on top, so I don't mind having this darker color at first. And I'm just going to kind of go, try to go right up to those purple lines without completely covering them. They, really, this color won't I don't think cover it completely anyway, so I think it should be fine. Yeah. Alright. So just by having these brighter colors here, it already makes that look farther away. Isn't that kind of interesting how that works? I'm going to grab some of the yellow green and mix that with this sap green kind of mixture that I've got going on here. It has some purple in it since I was doing some purples too so it's it's been dulled down by the purples and things that are in my brush. Let's put in my little sections of green. Each time I do one of these sections I'm going to change my color just slightly by picking up a little bit of different something. Either a little bit of yellow or a little bit of blue or something that will make it just slightly different from its neighbor. Neighboring little section. And by doing them in this horizontal motion too, it will make them look like grasses. Um, this is actually kind of gray there, so I'm going to grab some of this purple and the light ultramarine blue and mix that with my phthalo green and gray it out a little bit. We'll do these ones with this some kind of gray green color. color over the top of that too to all right and grab a little bit of my <clears throat> violet light 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 ultramarine blue add that over the top those two sections there and touch it over the top of this little blue section right there I'm just gonna blend that in a little bit like this got a little bit too bright so I'm gonna grab my purple I've cleaned out my brush now a little bit of burnt umber and I'm just gonna find my darkest areas my brush is not wanting to stay together okay I'm gonna switch to an angle brush here grab my three quarters three eighths inch angle brush see if that does better for me Just going to go in here and very strategically place some dark shadows in amongst my 
highlights to really darken up and pop out those really dark areas of the cliff side right there. And there's a few, so I can tap back over some of my highlight areas and it will push back some of my rocky rocks and things. Grab some of that burnt umber just straight. Let's do some brown. color right along that front side of that rock. Okay, that's that's better, I think. It's kind of pushed it back a little bit. Let's use a little bit of this brown on this back side of this too. Just a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to grab some of the sap green. And I've still got these purples in my brush. And that's fine. Grab some of the, the, some of the um, yellow oxide. Mix that. And we'll keep putting our fields in here. It's these kind of olive green colors as we get farther away from the foreground. And then as I get really farther away, I might add a little bit of blue even, because it'll sort of blue, become more blue. Let's grab a little bit of the phthalo blue, mix that with the color that we just did. We'll do this next one with that color. Ooh, that's really pretty. Grab a little bit of unbleached titanium to tone that down a little bit. It's just too bright. side. We're almost done, which means 30 minutes. 30 minute warning. You beat me to it. <laughs> that takes all the fun out of it. <laughs> Sorry. Jeez. <laughs> can't get myself off mute fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> I knew what you were going to say, so I just said to... My joke's getting stale. Is that what you're oh, saying? Oh, no, I'm just saying you You don't trust me. I need to come up with a little... I'm almost little, done. Mm, come on. <laughs> and you're getting your shirt in your paint again, so... No, I'm not. It's not in there. Oh, well, it was touching your Well, painting. this is dry. Oh, though. okay. All right. Just, so well, okay. well already, thank you. I got in trouble once. All right. All right. So, so fine. Do, do, you, do you want me to tell you or not? <laughs> I do. I do. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank it's you, like that Justin Bieber song. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? When, when you nod your head, you nod your head yes, and you want to say no, or I, something like that. I've never heard that song. <sighs> Man, I'm not a big Bieber fan, but when you hear it like a hundred times on the radio, <laughs> keeps it keeps ingrained in your head. for listening to the radio and not using your <laughs> Google Play me music. Well, they don't have traffic updates on Google Play true, music. True, true. <laughs> I 
There's one odd field out here that had a little bit lighter something to it. So making sure I got that one in there. I love this painting. This is so fun. Okay, so now I'm going to use a little bit of these different greens that I've got on my brush and just kind of do some highlights and random colors here and there just to kind of unify the painting a little bit. Grab a little bit of that purple color and I'll tap back in some of my fence, fences or whatever these are, or stone dividers in my field. I'm guessing it's stone, I don't know. I couldn't really tell from the picture, it just looks like Little divider. Just tapping in. If you tap instead of pull, you'll get a more natural looking kind of line. It it'll be a little bit broken up. This is a very impressionist painting, so we're not trying to get it exactly photorealist. We're just sort of trying to get the main the main idea behind it softly represented with the colors and I'm kind of played a little bit with the colors but we've definitely kind of tried to keep the composition similar okay there we go. Okay, so we're pretty, pretty good with. I'm, I'm really liking what's going on here. Might add a little bit of highlights along the cliff sides now. So let me clean my brush out really well. And decide what color I want. I think I'm going to use the unbleached titanium with some of this thalo green. See what that does. It's still a little bit bright. So let's grab some yellow oxide to it tone that down okay that's a good color there it's kind of just a little bit of muted green yellow oxide thalo green and unbleached titanium and I'm just going to very lightly pull some highlights along this cliff I don't have very much paint in my brush so these front edges of the cliff have a little bit more light hitting them so just trying to represent that <clears throat> maybe get a little bit more of the unbleached titanium lighten it up just slightly yeah there we go really need a different brush for this one's almost too big. Okay. There we go. As I get closer, I think I'm going to grab some of this. Let's grab some of the light, light yellow, cadmium yellow light. Add a little bit of that and do just a little bit of dry brushing with that color as we get closer to the bottom.
grab some yellow oxide. Do some bright yellow oxide right along there. Maybe some cadmium yellow. There we go. Get some really bright color right there. Add a little bit of it in here. And then, so once we get all of this in, this is our main kind of transition area here. I want a little bit of yellow oxide down in here. There's really this we're kind of keeping this nondescript because there's some kind of I don't know fields and things happening there. I'm gonna grab some of this purple. A little bit of unbleached titanium and I'm going to go back in here and darken up this area. Just a little bit. And then up in here there's a line that I didn't that I left out that sort of separates this from this. So put that in. Grab some of the dark brown, tap in some of that burnt umber along that. Are you there? <clears throat> okay. I'll clean up my brush. I think I need some purple right here. Really dark. All right, let me grab my fan brush now, and we're going to do the do the grass and we'll be done. It's not too bad. I might add a little bit more highlights back here but we'll see when I get the grass in there. So I'm going to use the fan brush. I'm not going to wet, wet it down. I'm going to grab a sap green. I think I need more, more green here. And this is just going to be a matter of layering lots and lots of short choppy brush strokes. So I might add just a little bit of blending medium to make it a little bit easier to flow on the brush. So I've got, I'm going to grab a little bit of phthalo green too. Sap green, phthalo green. It's a very vivid green and I'm going to tap, set it down and pull up. So that's going to be our main uh, brush stroke and this is kind of angled if you look at the picture it's kind of angled um, so we can tilt it just slightly to kind of match this angle and I'm sort of doing these like circular short brush strokes very choppy short tapping brush strokes and so I'm going to start with my dark and we'll build to the light color we've already got a little bit of variation going on in here. Um, if we were to leave it like this, you know, we've got all these hard lines here where we're seeing where the uh, brush strokes stop and start, and that's what we want to blend out. So I'm going to grab some, uh, well, let's grab some of the yellow light chamomile medium. And I'm going to start going over the top of my last layer just slightly. So come up underneath, create some more brush strokes. I don't want to cover everything completely though, so you just kind of have to go in between and underneath where you've already been. Add more and more and more and more that you add the more, the less defined each little brush stroke is going to get. So I'm going to add a little bit of, let me grab some white, mix that in with these colors. So we'll make a little bit of a muted, muted green. We'll add a little bit of that. And then we're going to 
not going to add a lot of that color, but I want to add it especially up in here where the transition is between these these two hills and do pull some brush strokes over the top into that dark area. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm going to grab some the brighter yellow. These really bright ones, I want to be careful where I put them because I don't want to overwhelm it. So each new layer, I'm adding, I'm going to do a little bit less than the previous one. So the brightest layer is going to have the fewest brush strokes in it because we don't want it to overwhelm the painting it'll be the most noticeable because it'll be the last layer all right so we're already getting some grassy feel you can kind of get the idea this is kind of a repeating pattern there I don't necessarily want that so I'm going to try to break that up by kind of coming around both sides of it and sort of pulling it out so that it doesn't look so obviously basically you're not wanting to um, create any obvious patterns in your grass so you're I'm kind of pulling these random um, brush strokes and moving my hand up and back as I do it so that it doesn't have any definite pattern to it. Okay, now I'm going to add this, these two, the phthalo green and the light cadmium yellow. It will make the most vivid green of the bunch. And I'm going to add just a tiny bit of water because it's getting sticky. Usually I don't add water to my fan brush because it can make it a little bit droopy but it needs a little bit just to kind of help it along the paint's getting thick okay now I'm going to add some of this color it's just going to be varying shades of gray green and now I'm really going to start thinking about where I'm placing these um, and see where I thought think maybe that needs a little bit of light color and try to create some some shapes in my grass if you look at your reference picture too, there's there's definite movement in these grass. They kind of grow in clumps. They're not perfectly even. The sheep are chowing down on it. Okay, so going over the top of some of these dark areas. If I cover too much of it, I can go back in with some dark. And some more dark grasses, but that's looking pretty good, I think. I add a little bit of this, just a little bit in here. I'm just going to tap a little bit of detail into this hill that's closest to us with this bright green color. Just sort of soften up that area there. Let's grab some unbleached titanium now. Mix that in with it. It'll keep it a little bit muted. We'll use a little bit of that. I want to make sure there's a really good bright edge between these two sections there. That I get some good grass looking stems happening. This is almost straight on bleach titanium. It's mixing a little bit with the with the paint, but it's it's kind of like dead grass color. There's some like dried out grasses happening. All 
All right. I think we're about done, honey. What do you think? We can add more detail on Tuesday if we decide we want some more highlights on our hills and things. But I think for now, that's pretty good. If you wanted to leave it like this and not add sheep, you could add, you know, maybe a few little flowers or something like that in this foreground to give it a little bit more interest or maybe a fence or, you know, I don't know. You can get creative with it. But uh, I think for now, we're done. So thanks, guys, for watching. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Oh. <laughs> what? Why are you oh. giving me big eyes? Okay, obviously, you just forget every time. Oh, all right. Sorry. All right. Yes, I did forget. I totally did forget. How? I mean, how many times have we done this? I don't know. I just... It, I, okay, I, I, was, I will not... I was getting into my closing spiel there. And you give me a hard time for not telling you you've gone off screen. All right. I'm going to add some grass <laughs> to under his feet. Here we go. This is our stickman mascot. He's gone through many versions of... But every every uh, video we add a little bit of something depending on what we've mm -hmm. been painting that day. So Stickman three point one. Yep. He's got some grass. He's got a kitty cat friend to this time, so Yeah, we kinda of branched <laughs> out there a little bit. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I forgot to do? What? We didn't do stick giraffe on Tuesday. We did well, I know. We forgot stick giraffe. And we right. thought that was gonna be so cute and then we completely forgot it. We did. Shoot. We're getting old. I know. We've slept since then, so <laughs> there's no telling. <laughs> All right. So I think we're done for today. Um, if you want to put some sheep in this, I uh, want to see how we do that. You can come back on Tuesday, and we'll be adding some sheep on Tuesday night. And then next week, we will not have a video on Saturday. We'll have it on Friday instead. It'll probably be in the morning time, but I'll put that uh, link up on my channel, so you can check that out. Um, next week yeah i'm not putting my links up too far in advance anymore because it's i don't know yeah it seemed like youtube was doing something weird because we the links or yeah because so. we go to launch the video and it wouldn't start right right to create new links and it was yeah. a mess so so i've been starting to put up my links Just about two days. to three days before and it, and seems it seems to be working to work, yeah it seems to be working better yeah. so um so yeah i look for that uh, midweek next week and we'll have the friday video link up and I'll put it in my Facebook groups too and on social media and all that good stuff. So thanks guys for watching. Really appreciate you all and we will see you next time.